Hello, welcome to episode 211 of the Epic Film Challenge 2. A thousand more movies you must see before you die. This is the first Epic Film Challenge 2 video for Asian cinema season. What better way to kick off than with an Akira Kurosawa film. In fact, I think the first Kurosawa film I've watched and talked about in this whole thing. I don't know how I managed to go, or we managed to go, over 200 episodes without talking about a Kurosawa film. Wow. You, you, you've seen... Really? Seven Samurai? Yeah. I think that's it. No, I think I've seen the other one, too. The other one? <laughs> Yojimbo, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, but, but apart from that, you haven't seen many, so this was like a, you know, this you hadn't seen this before. Is Seven Samurai the one with the guy who's just doing that the whole time? That's Yojimbo. Yeah, so yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah, and you've definitely seen Seven Samurai because yeah. I made a video well, I was so... four hours, and I'll yeah. never forget. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, right, so Rashomon, right? I... Didn't love it when I first saw it. When I first watched Seven Samurai, that was my gateway. I went and watched Yojimbo, Sanjuro, Hidden Fortress, Throne of Blood, and Rashomon was like, oh, I can't wait to watch this one. And it just it underwhelmed me a little bit. I appreciated it, but I didn't love it. I think I was a little tired when I watched it. Like, I'd either just got back from work or I was about to go to work, something like that. So it's been a long time, like six years, coming back to this film and now watching it in high definition. It's crazy how much a rewatch can really change your perspective on a film. I was just... Oh, blown away by it, even though I'd already seen it. I just appreciate it on such a different level watching it this time. So when you watched it now with me, that was the second time you watched it? Yeah, second time. Oh, okay. And I was kind of hoping... That, I mean, it was exactly what I thought was going to happen, actually. Sometimes you shouldn't put expectations on films, but I really was expecting it to be this, ah, now I get it, and it really was. It's a story, and I love how it's told, because basically 80% of the film, 85% of the film, is a story within a story. It's like a, a third-hand story. We open up at Rashomon Gate, there's uh, a woodcutter and a priest. And they're both kind of taking shelter under this half-broken-down temple, the rain's pouring down, and they're both really disturbed by something. This guy turns up and asks them what, what's going on, and they say, we've just seen something that's horrible, we can't believe it. They tell him the story, and the story is, is them hearing other stories. There's a man who got murdered and his wife raped, and we see that play out through the recollections of four different people throughout the entire film. And so the first time you see the story of this bandit turning up and murdering this man and raping his wife, you're watching it and you're trying to like figure out what's going on and stuff, and then you start to realize, well, wait, this is, this is what the bandit, the guy who murdered this man and raped this woman, this is what he's telling us happened which means it might not be exactly how it happened. And then we hear the other side of it, and the other side of it, and the other side of it. And so it basically gives you all these different perspectives. And it's all about perspective and also faith in mankind in some ways, because it's really about these, these people who are telling the story and can't believe how horrible it is, and that no one can tell the truth, and that no one really knows what the true story is, because everyone lies, and so how can you have faith in anyone? if everyone lies and they're losing their faith on just trusting anyone. So I love that, that theme that runs through the, the whole film. What did you think? Well, I, I'd, I'd forgotten about the beginning where they're like, oh, I can't believe this. This is the worst thing I've ever heard about. Right. And I was expecting like someone just dissecting someone and eating the bits off them or something like that. <laughs> and then it's just a guy you know, doing stuff that happens every day, and then what? What? Well, raping a woman. I, I guess, and then, but I mean, and then he kills a man, and that happens every day too. And so I'm like, because they were talking about, well, there's war, and there's this and that. I know, but this is crossing the line. No, 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 no. But the, uh, the uh, and it was very underwhelming. What actually happened? But no, no, it's it's not the act. It's more the witnessing all these different uh, accounts of it and realizing that you can't really trust anyone. And that no one will ever give you a complete yeah, version of the truth. That's the that. that's the whole idea of why they're so disenchanted with everything. Is that how naive Particularly, they were in the 1600s or something? Or and then whenever you, that era was. And then you counter that with the fact that you have a woodcutter who's just like a just a general person, a, a laborer, and then you have a a priest who's very spiritual, and they they both are kind of it gives you the contrast and how yeah, they both. Yeah, but the way they're like, oh, I can't believe it, and then you look. Like, what? Well, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to draw you what in. What happened? Like... <laughs> what did they do? Oh, come on! Heard this story a hundred thousand times before, you know. So it's it, it was kind of like, that's all that happened, kind of. Kind of, no. technically, yeah. it's you know. I, I, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
We have some great actors in this film. Uh, Takashi Shimura plays the woodcutter, and he's always got that kind of like, you know, shocked mm, face, mm, like just a proper like angry video game nerd mouth all the time, just looking very dour and really expresses the the downtrodden feeling of his character. And the rain only enhances that. I love all the scenes at the gates with the rain pouring down, and apparently they were really trying to get the rain seen on camera, and it wasn't showing up in some scenes, so they had to dye the rain uh, black so that it would actually show up in certain scenes, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. And we have Toshio Mifune, who just one of the greatest actors ever. Who and is he? he plays the bandit. And he just that's, gives That's the 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 Yojimbo. He's Yojimbo, right? he's the, the wild crazy one in Seven Samurai. Him. He uh he's just so versatile and he's very animalistic and he's basically like his Seven Samurai character but more sinister in this film. He was. <laughs> a, he studied. Um, he studied lions, uh, and their, their movement and stuff when he uh, was was preparing for this film, and yeah, he just has such an unbridled kind of crazy performance that it, it really works for me. I could see people not liking it and kind of it rubbing them the wrong way and being too over the top, but I think it really works. But he, I mean, you really dance a fine line when you do something so over the top, like the way he laughs and just He's runs like around. He's like the Japanese and, Joker. I was thinking he would make a great Joker. He would. <laughs> um, but I, I love the differences of his character between all the, the stories, especially when you see his version of the story and then the last telling of the story where it's just completely different and you realize that this bandit might have perhaps been completely putting on how, you know, how, how, how good of a, brave he how is. brave he was and all that kind of stuff. I like how even though there's, you know, a rape of a character, we don't see it, you know, we know that it happened, and that's all that really needs to be shown. Well, obviously, this rave, is rape, obviously it's 1950, though, so obviously we're not going to see any explicit scenes. But I, I, yeah, that's not something I like to see in the film. But anyway, what do you mean? Well, it, it's was it rape or was it? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, well, I, I guess you could look into that because the what I love is that you have the bandit, the man, and the wife, and and all three of those um, end up giving their recollection of the story because the the man who gets murdered is uh he tells his story through a medium which is a crazy scene of that this was woman great like so i mean that's a scene straight out of a horror film just the way that it's done the way his voice comes out of this woman the the veil that she's wearing that's flowing around and she's just it's really weird and interesting and the cinematography in this film is just uh, what do you think of that the way the film looked were you impressed by that in any way um I mean, it's all mostly, well, all of it is on location and in these woods and the, the kind of sun dappled light coming through. They use these big mirrors to get the, the natural light coming in and filtering in through the leaves and stuff. And See, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that because it, it, that doesn't come through that much. To me, it was just uh, very ordinary. I, there was nothing about the cinematography that made me go like, wow. Mm. Because I usually notice when something is like yeah. really good, because then it will be shot after shot after shot, like in Blade Runner. Sure. Like everything is placed really, really well. I I think the Japanese are really good at that kind of stuff. Like when they when they make a garden, they sure. plant a tree where it will drape over something, yeah. and the leaves will it's something very uh, cinematography. -style. Like about <laughs> Japan, and no, but like if you walk into a garden, everything is just yeah, everything perfectly placed for the for the optimal. It's, it's like the, the the golden cut. It's, it's the golden it's, cut. Oh, uh, what do we call it? What do we call it? It's um rule of thirds. I don't yes. know. Yes, <laughs> okay. something like that. There's <laughs> there is a rule of something. I don't know how. There's a rule. The Yulnesnit in Norwegian. I don't know what it's called in English mm. right now. But uh, something. Um, I believe in German they call it the Luftkissenfahrzeug. It's not an aircraft. Right. No. Uh, but uh, it's there's something beautiful about everything in Japan. <laughs> Some places really, uh, and this one was just nothing out of the ordinary for me. Mm. But you know that I usually notice when something yeah, yeah, yeah. is really great. Which which makes it even wise. more interesting to me. Because when I first saw it, I was the same way. Mm. I didn't see anything particularly special about it. But really looking at it now, I think it might be because I just watched The Hidden Fortress recently and I was really just looking at the way he placed the camera. And so I was really thinking about it while watching this, like shots of characters running through trees and the camera's following them really quickly, but keeping them in focus and the leaves are flashing back and forth. Apparently, this is the first film to ever shoot directly into the sun. I don't know if that's true, 
that seems kind of unlikely that over 50 years into the lifespan of film it had never been done before, but apparently that's a, a point of trivia. I'm not saying that it was like bad. No, no, you're saying it, you're saying it didn't stand out to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it, it stands out in that kind of, oh my god, it looks amazing, but I think that it just, it looks great and it's, it's shot great and there's just great moments and great uh, it little details. Hmm? Is it square? Yes, yes. That, that might be one of the things, because it's a lot harder for me to see the great okay. angling <laughs> yeah. in, in a good shot when it's square. When you when you have it more like widescreen like we do now, it's a lot easier to place things sure. in an artistic way. Yeah. Um, that was a highlight for me, was the cinematography. I wish I could have seen it in color. Especially mm. the medium scene. Okay. I like that it's in, in black and white, but it's just kind of the, yeah, it's of course, a style. But and it, just, I, I wish that I could see what the colors were like. I love the, the, the set of the, the, the temple, the half-broken temple that we, we opened the yeah. film with. They built that from scratch, and it was a funny story where Kira Kurosawa said to the production company, we're going to build one set for the film. Okay, go ahead. And when the studio realized how expensive it was to build this massive, half-broken-down temple, they were like, we wish you'd built 10 sets, it would have been cheaper. <laughs> so he kind of tricked them into doing it in, in, in some ways. Uh, but also just the, the production design of that, where it literally looks like a building that's just like falling down, but obviously they need to make it safe as well. And I think it just, it looks like they just found this old, you know, this old gate temple thing structure. It's a, uh, yeah, really impressive production design. And the acting is, the, the acting is very good. I just like the story. I like where it goes. I like the the ending with the baby. I think that that is a a necessary thing to add a, a moment of hope. Aren't you spoiling? Not really. Like I'm that. just saying that the the movie ends on on somewhat of a hopeful note when it really is is covering how disillusioned these characters be become with humanity based on the lies that um, just permeate our, our day to day lives, where no one's really fully honest with each other. Obviously, played through the extreme of this murder situation. In the beginning, I was thinking, oh, this is dragging a bit. Mm -hmm. But by the second story, I got more like, okay, so this is the second story. Well, that's when you see that it's, there's differences, which well, is... Well, yeah, and I, I expected it to, to be, but I didn't expect the difference that was mm. from the second Yeah, we we'll, won't we'll go into too much of the, no, the actual, no. you know, talking about uh, them, but, but I like how it's all structured and played out. Yeah, and then it got more interesting, and then by the last story, it was like, ah... Mm. Okay then. Yeah, the fourth viewpoint is interesting because it comes in towards the end of the film and you, you're not really expecting it because there wasn't another person there, or so we thought. At the end of the film we, we, we learn that another character was there and saw everything. Or did they? What I find interesting is that we see this kind of the, the fourth and true version of the story play out, but we never see, see that character you know, in the bushes or anything. So to me I wonder if that character who said that they saw it all was just trying to make up their own version of the story that makes them feel better about the whole situation. And I think you can view it both ways. I don't think it's really meant to be seen as the, the true version because there's still things that don't match up with all four of the uh, retellings which I find really interesting. So I don't think it's a film that you really should look at and break down and find out the true version. Do you feel differently? Yeah, because yeah. I feel like it's pretty straightforward just adding those four together and you know what the truth is. Yeah, but then it, which the elements are which, you know? The stories all make sense. Obviously, yeah. the bandit would brag about himself and make him come out as the brave guy, but also fair mm -hmm. with the way that the fight goes down and so on. And the woman, obviously, innocent, wanting to kill herself and then stuff like that because of what happened, you know? And then you have uh, the, the husband. What he said made him come out as a better person than mm -hmm. what she did. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> obviously, the last one, okay, that makes sense because uh, they were cowards. Yeah. And the woman was a bitch. Crazy bitch. Yeah, but he's, well, or, or was she? Like, I, I, I just, I don't, I, I, know, I don't like the idea of really breaking it down too much, but I like how... Anyone with eyebrows like that is a crazy <laughs> fucking bitch. I like how every character is trying to hide their shame in some aspect of the story, which is the central focus of everything, I suppose. I love the scene when we first see the bandit lying down, uh, and he sees the, the man and his wife go past uh, on horseback, and he's just lying there. Just like, you know, sweaty and stuff and scratching and whatever and this wind kind of comes over him and stuff. Just, again, I love the way that it was um, hmm. put together, you know, from all aspects of the cinematography, the, the lighting, the acting. The way that he was scratching actually made me think about that. Uh, 
Yes. His character with the shoulder. It's, it's one of those ticks that he puts into some of his characters, which is, mm. uh, and Takashi Shimura does a lot of that as well, I find, which is uh, kind of fun to spot between films. So this was the, the first big kind of hit for Kurosawa in terms of international success, 1950, and this was the beginning of him going on to just make like masterpiece after masterpiece. Like It's just ridiculous, the films he followed Rashomon up with, and this was a big hit overseas and all that kind of thing, and influenced so many people. Anyway. I'll have put up another video talking about the making of this film, so go check that out, I'll put a link to that at the end of this one. But is it a film you should see before you die? What do you reckon? I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay? <laughs> that was great and all, but it's just, the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good, but um, like now I'm thinking about the cinematography and yeah. the eyebrows. Yeah, the, the, the eyebrows they of the woman seem to... Down. They break it down. so much. Wow, I'm that's so kidding. superficial. That's so super... I don't know. I'm kidding, but they you, were distracting. I, they seem to be when we watched the film. Like, oh, it's so horrible. It's like, oh, she, she looked like a goddess. And I'm like, ooh, she looks horrible. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? That's horrible. But then the medium had it too, so I guess it was just a way to make women look uglier. Well, anyways, it was the style back then, you know. So. True, it's weird. Anyways, uh, it's it's a good movie. If you're a Kurosawa mo fan, then sure. <laughs> I'll put that on the website. I'm alright. No, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. I also loved the the two the two duels. Well, we see the same duel but from different perspectives. Um, just some good f fight choreography in the beginning, and then when we see a different version of that fight when they're both hopeless, it's just so funny. Yeah. Like it's. Uh, it looks like they're just faffing around, but it seems very carefully done, you know, the choreography and everything. For me, it is definitely film you should see before you die. It's just so good. Uh, you know, 90 minutes, short, to the point, just different, and uh, influenced so many other directors and storytellers in the unique way that it, that it told its story. There's not many films from that era that, that go as deep as this, where you're going a story inside a story, you know, uh, this is I, I heard this from this person, and it all kind of comes back to that gate at the end. I just think it's a really cool framing device, which had been done back in the silent era with stuff like Dr. Caligari and so on. And you look at Sherlock Jr., Buster Keaton, it's kind of like a film within a film. But uh, I, I like those kinds of stories if they're done well. I think this one's really done well. It's not my favorite Kurosawa, but it's it's really climbed up there. I, uh, I loved it. So, there we go. Is the husband Japanese? I have no idea, actually. Do you know actually. what his name was? No, I, I don't know the actor who played the husband like I do, say, Toshiro Mifune or whatever. I, 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 I want to find out. I don't seem to remember. You think he, he wasn't Japanese, right? No, no, but if the movie was from the 50s, I'm sure he was Japanese, because I think they were pretty strict about that back then. But he looks <laughs> kind of Chinese. Okay, yeah. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Well, it might be an offense. I people might, are so, I people might have so rated it higher if they didn't make you think that it really was like some kind of demonic, like horrible. So that, that I happened. see. So that's where it disappointed yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It disappointed me a bit because I was expecting something truly horrible, well, you, and then it was just something like. It's a very simple murder. Back then, that was even more normal, you know. So it's like. Yeah. The, yeah, it was just uh, the actual... I could see how it set you up for a disappointment, yes. but at the same time, it's, it again, me to me, it's more about the... It, it wasn't them being so shocked at the fact that murder had taken place, it was just more the idea of this, all these lies that, that had gone on, and that, uh, yeah. Cultural differences, Cultural I guess. differences! Everybody <laughs> fucking lies. Oh, the Japanese guy lied. What? Yeah, you could probably just, you know, play, like, the, the, the opening, you know, credits of Rashomon, and cut to the woodcutter and the priest, and they're like, oh, we can't believe it. And then just have house walk in and go, everybody lies. And then just credits, you know. Autoimmune. Autoimmune. It, it, it could be lupus. <laughs> That's the other one. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks for anyways. watching. We'll see you in the next video uh, as we roll on through these Asian cinema season videos, which, again, I'll try and get you to watch another Kurosawa film. We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll watch another one. Okay. Just don't lead me on. I wasn't leading you on. I didn't I'm say. I'm talking this, to the this, actors. This. Okay. It's not like I was like Rashomon. You, oh my god, you, your mind is going to be blown. Like the disgusting stuff, like with the hand going through. All right. Thanks for uh, watching. He was Japanese. He was Japanese. There we yeah. go. So you were just a cold-hearted racist. And on that note, thank you for watching. See you next time.